you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Um, there are people who have, listen to me, there are people who have the ability, but they may not have the willingness. You can have ability and not be willing. You can be willing and not have the ability. Are we together now? The willingness of a man is connected to his integrity. Integrity comes from the word integer, sameness, unbendableness. The Bible says that when God speaks, you can trust him. So this is another quality of God, his integrity, integrity, integrity. That means if God vows that I will lift you, he meant it. If God vows that this year you will experience the power, the grace, the glory of God, then you can believe him. Listen, we live in a world that is full of falsehood. Someone can promise you heaven and earth today and change his mind tomorrow. Someone can promise you a job now. Someone can promise you some money and all of a sudden change his mind. And so we take that idea in dealing with God, that, that, that vacillation of men. So the Bible clarifies it once and for all and says in your dealing with God, remember that God is not a man. He does not lie. He is not like the son of man that can retrace his words back. If he speaks, he has the ability and also the integrity to bring that word to pass. Now, when you have a combination of ability and integrity, you are worth believing. Mm. If you have ability and you do not have integrity, there is room to doubt you. If you have integrity and don't have ability, because it is ability that defends integrity. You see, I can have the integrity, but do I have the ability to defend my integrity? This is faith. We're examining the subject of faith. If I stop here, that's fine for this session because it's important that we understand how Bible faith works. You want to move forward? It will be based on your revelation of God's integrity. It will be based on your revelation of God's ability. These are the spiritual qualities that will form your confidence. So that in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the challenges, you can stand and say, I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him, the Bible says, against that day. Now, watch this. Having explained God's ability and God's integrity. Let me bring an angle to the subject of faith that probably most believers have not paid attention to. Every promise in the Bible, listen carefully, every promise in the Bible is conditional. Every result in the Bible is conditional. Now listen carefully. The love of God is unconditional. But results in the kingdom are highly conditional. One more time. The love of God is unconditional. But results, our excelling in the kingdom is based on conditions. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. The Bible says, It shall come to pass. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, it says, to do and observe all that I command you this day. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. It says that the Lord God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2 says, all these blessings, all, not some, all, these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord, not if you are loved by God. If you will hearken, if you will walk in keeping, most believers focus on finding promises, but we do not focus on finding the conditions attached for the manifestation of that promise. Listen very carefully. This is deliverance for someone already. 
So we have found out from scripture that God lifts. We have found out from scripture that there is speed. We have found out from scripture that God can prosper. We have found out from scripture that God can turn the heart of a king to favor a man. We have found out from scripture that men can contend for the anointing. We have found out from scripture that God can multiply the influence of a man and, and spread his word and his work in your life all across the globe. But we usually do not focus on finding out the conditions attached. This is what separates believers who experience results and believers who may not experience results. It is not the love of God. The same Lord is rich unto all. It is our inability to understand the requirements. For instance, I desire increase, you may say. Just believing that God is a God of increase will not bring increase. No. You must study the principles that are attached to that dimension of spiritual possibility. So you begin to study principles like there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Give, the Bible says, and it shall be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together. Running over shall men give unto you. You begin to study principles like the diligent hand shall be made fat. You see. So if you learn about the spiritual laws that govern wealth and abundance, you learn about the laws of diligence, the laws of productivity, the laws of exchange. All of these are spiritual laws that synergize themselves together to see to it that wealth and abundance becomes yours in experience. Just quoting it and speaking it and hoping it will happen is not faith. I am sorry, but that is not faith. Bible faith is not just saying what God has said. Bible faith is not just wishing a manifestation of what God has said. Bible faith is going back to search for the conditions allocated for that manifestation. You only commit God's integrity when your obedience is complete. Not when your desire is there. When your obedience is complete. I pray we are getting blessed. So this is very important. You want to experience longevity. It's, it's not enough to just say I wouldn't die. You will be surprised to see what happens to you. You have to go to the word and find out. Longevity is a possibility in Christ. That means it's obtainable. By the way, let me tell you this. Everything that cannot be captured in Christ cannot be accessed by the saints. The way we function in the kingdom is that every spiritual blessing is routed to the saints through the office of the Christ. The Bible says we have been given all spiritual blessings. The name, the name, the storehouse for those spiritual blessings is what the Bible calls grace. The grace of God represents a system of possibilities, a compendium of every possibility that is in God available to the saints, but only routed through the office of the Christ. Right? So, this is very, very important. I, I need to drum this so that you will understand it. We've spoken about vision, but we have to speak about faith. Because someone might be sitting watching in church now or just watching from your homes or wherever you're watching from and you're saying, Apostle, I, I've, I trusted God to move forward in 2018, 2019, 2020, now 2021, this is March. I assure you it will become as it has always been, except if you find out the principles allocated for that dimension of results. And this is why God has sent me by way of um, technology to bring you a, an understanding of how Bible faith works. So longevity, for instance, you go to scripture and you find out that longevity is a possibility in Christ. Now you keep that knowledge on one side and begin to search for the principles that make that happen. Principle number one says, I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. Here's my advice. Choose life. So you choose life not just by verbalizing life alone. 
You choose life by making the decisions that are pro-life. For instance, the determination to keep a healthy body is choosing life. The determination to see to it that you do not expose your body to substances that destroy your body is a responsibility, is part of the activity that leads to your choosing life. Another principle that governs longevity, the Bible says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. So if you are not useful, if your life, your resources, your intellect, your energy is not participating in kingdom come, then you are already a victim, a potential victim of premature death. Your life, there must be space for the kingdom through your life to guarantee longevity. Principle number three, for instance, I'm just using longevity as an example to explain faith. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother that you may live long and that it may be well with you. Because you don't want to live long in a miserable life or with a miserable life. You want to live long and also that it be well with you. Honor is a key that controls longevity. When you dishonor men, you dishonor their sacrifices. Among the many ills that you bring upon yourself is that you cut short the lifespan of every good thing in your life. It is not only your physical, your biological life that will be cut short. Dishonor cuts short the lifespan of every good thing. Your resources, your access, your influence, anything that is good in your life that is alive. Dishonor is able to cut it. So honor extends life. It extends the lifetime and the lifespan of your wealth, your influence, your biological life. Let me give you an assignment. Everyone following, listening, watching. This is what I want you to do. Write down three or four areas of your life where you are trusting God to get supernatural results, areas where you want to shift into new dimensions, virgin dimensions, higher horizons. It could honestly be in an area of your finances. Maybe you're not satisfied with your spiritual level, your prayer level, your word level. Maybe you are tired of struggling, living from hand to mouth, or you are tired of whatever level it is. It may be for your home. It may be for your career. Write it down. Then I challenge you to walk with the spirit of grace, to search through scripture, search for the conditions that secure the power and the integrity of God to perform and to be made manifest over those issues. You are not manifesting faith if you do not know the conditions that are attached to the blessings you desire. I will say this as many times as I have the chance to. You are not walking in Bible faith if all you have is an awareness of the results, the outcome, the end product, the possibilities. You must know the conditions that connect to them. When you know those conditions, the next step is to obtain grace. Listen carefully. The next step, because some of those conditions in many regards cannot be satisfied by human strength. In fact, most of the conditions that lead to the promises we desire, by human strength, we will not be able to satisfy that condition. This is why we obtain grace. The Bible says that God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that ye having all sufficiency, that you will abound unto every good work. You are going to have to pray and obtain grace. Father, if giving is connected to finance to increase, then I obtain the giving grace like the Macedonian church. If consistency of prayer is responsible for my spiritual growth, in spite of my busy schedules, I'm a banker, I'm a pastor, I'm a mother, I'm a father, I'm a leader, I'm, I'm, I'm a businessman, I don't have that time yet, I desire to grow. I obtain the grace so that every time I need to pray, that inertia, that laziness will be conquered on the strength of that grace. 
most of the conditions that we are to meet for the results we desire, let me assure you, they will not come to us. We will not be able to fulfill them in the strength of the flesh. We need the supernatural empowerment of the spirit. And in the name of Jesus, for someone listening to me, someone watching, I stretch my hands and I declare, I release that grace, the grace that grants you the stamina, the strength, the discipline, the energizing to walk in keeping with the conditions connected to the possibilities that you desire. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace for your spiritual life. Receive that grace for your finances. Receive that grace for your career. Receive that grace for your business. Receive that grace for ministry. Receive that grace for family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Faith. Faith. Now, this is very, very, very powerful. When you receive that grace, listen carefully. The next thing is obey. Be prompt and be thorough. Be prompt and be thorough. Now you are not in ignorance as to the result you desire to obtain. You are also not in ignorance as to the conditions that connect it. You have obtained grace from God. The next thing is actions of obedience. Actions of obedience. Our knowledge is worthless if we do not translate it into action. Actions of obedience. The Bible says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. It's not enough to know. You must do. You must do. You must do. The doing grace. The grace for obedience. The grace to push through. So I know that prayer is part of the factors that control spiritual power. Knowing is not enough. I have obtained grace. The spirit of prayer and supplication. Now I must sustain the stamina to pray without ceasing. I must sustain the stamina to press. To hold on to the four horns of the altar. I know that the study of the word is responsible for my spiritual enlightenment. I obtain the grace for revelation. And then I sit down and I study. This is very powerful. Very, very powerful. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. All that we do in this kingdom, the exploits that happen in ministry, the exploits that happen in business, the exploits that happen in finances, they are all faith dependent. And there is no advancement for anyone, any man, any woman, any boy, any girl, any pastor, any prophet, any apostle who ignores a thorough understanding of Bible faith. I made up my mind that I will live by faith. I will walk by faith. Not just by confessing the word alone. Confession is very powerful. But if that's all you do, you are missing out on the equation of faith. Confession is not all that you do. You obtain grace through knowledge to walk in keeping with the conditions that actualize or commit God's hand over that outcome you desire. This is very powerful. Years ago, the Lord told me that he would use me mightily and he would use me across the globe and I would bring his life and his power to nations to kingdoms, to continents, from a very little place, the northern part of Nigeria. He spoke to me and I dared to believe him. But you see, I would have written it down and said, God said this and I would have remained there till today. But I believed. And then the next assignment was to find out what are the conditions I must satisfy for this prophecy to be made manifest in my life. I knew it would require diligence. I knew it would require study. I knew it would require paying the price to sow into the spirit. I obtained grace from God and I've never stopped pressing, paying that price by the spirit. And glory to God what he has done today and what he continues to do. Let me encourage someone. Waiting for God to come through arbitrarily is a spiritual consolation, but it is not how God works. 
most of the things that we say in church, they are wonderful cliches, but we need to go back and probe where we got those things from. Because some of them may be very well-meaning expressions of comfort, expressions of sociological consolations, but they do not carry any power in the realm of the spirit to change our lives. I'm speaking to someone who is at the end of a level. I'm speaking to someone who is having a holy anger and saying, I'm tired of this level. Remember our first scripture, you have encompassed this level. You may be a man of God listening to me. Thank God for the dimension of power you have seen, but is that all you can see in Christ? Is that all there is? Thank God for the level of revelation God has given you, but is that all there is? Thank God for the level of influence, dear businessman, but is this all? Is this all God can produce through you? Thank God for the level of speed that you have seen, but is this all? Our call among many other things is to maximize our destinies in Christ. For the Bible says the path of the just is akin to a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. So, wallowing in mediocrity is not God's desire. In fact, here's how he puts it. John 15 and verse 8. He says, herein is our Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. Not just fruit. Much fruit. He says, let your light so shine before men. Jesus was teaching. Mentoring the disciples in what we call the Beatitudes. He said, let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, good deeds, and glorify your Father. I want the Lord to be glorified in my life. I want him to be glorified in and through me. And so I want to be able to maximize all that he's put within me. To bring it all out and to become a blessing to the nations with the spiritual resources that he's granted me access to. And this is my challenge to you, their viewer and the, the, the entire membership of the Liberty Church. And then by extension to Europe and the entire globe. Listen to me, God is counting on us even in this season. Remember the prophecy Isaiah chapter 60, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. I like to quote it from Amplified. Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. The Bible says, Rise to a new light. Why? For your light is come. And it said, The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Nations are confused. People are looking on to God right now. It looks like the future is bleak. People have lost money. People have lost families. Some of you are behind on bills. You are trusting God for breakthroughs. People are plunging into depression. It looks like the, the world, the world is, um, is not worth living in right now. People are committing suicide, contemplating suicide. I bring you a word of hope here at the shift conference 2021 listen carefully there is hope for a tree and faith is the victory it says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith not just our desire this is the victory say after me this is the victory that overcometh the world this is the victory that shifts me from one dimension to the other. This is the victory that brings me into triumph and keeps me in triumph, even our faith. What is our faith? Our confident assurance alongside the steps that we take based on the revelation of God's integrity, based on the revelation of God's ability, based on my understanding of the role that I have to play, and then the grace to play that role diligently. There is nobody who understands this equation and will not see the mighty hand of God. I want us to pray. We'll have to stop here. I just took two points. Please make sure you do not miss the miracle service. Monday, tomorrow will be the miracle service. That will be my final session. I'll have the opportunity to pray for the sick, to prophesy over people, to release the grace and the glory of God right from here 
across the airwaves and I assure you no matter what the issue is, no matter what the challenge is, I'd like you to release your faith and be expectant. But for now we're going to pray. I believe in the power of prayer. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. It says but in everything. By prayer and supplication, garnished with thanksgiving, it says, make your request known. Do not assume God knows it. Make your request known. Make your pain known. Make your desire known. Make your expectations known. We're about to pray. I'd like you to bow your heads or stand or lie down or kneel, whatever position that is comfortable for you, because we really are going to pray. We'll take the last seven or so minutes that we have now to just pray and talk to our God. The Bible says that we can come to him boldly to obtain grace, obtain mercy, grace to help even in times of need. I assure you these are times of need and we need to approach him without understanding. This is the confidence the Bible says that we have in him that when we pray, he hears us. The Bible says, unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lift your voice everywhere and begin to thank the Lord for this word. The principles that make for advancement. Lord, I thank you because I have heard your word and I know that it is your desire to advance me. Listen to me, listen to me. Do not let anyone make you believe that God is comfortable with your stagnation. Do not let anyone make you believe that where you are is the highest of God's expectations for you. No, culture may say stay there. Religion may say stay there. Men may say stay there, but I challenge you to shift. It's time to move to a higher dimension. He told the people, Moses, tell the people to go forward. Go forward. Do not let the Red Sea stop you. Go forward. Lift your voice and pray. Father, thank you for your word. The Bible declares that the entrance of your word gives light and even understanding to the simple. I have come with a word that is simple enough for you to understand. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Don't be silent. This is the time to pray. London, pray. Europe, pray. Nigeria, pray. Everywhere connected, pray. Make sure you are praying. It is your will. You have to believe that it is God's will. If you do not believe it is God's will to advance you, then you are not sure of his backing. He only backs what is consistent with his will. His kingdom only comes when his will is done. I know it is your will for me to move forward. I know it is your will for me to not remain at the same spiritual level. To not remain at the same prayer level. At the same word level. At the same financial level. At the same level of influence. You desire to shift me and Lord I am ready. Lift your voice and pray. Now I'd like you to decree and declare. Father, I obtain grace to be a man or a woman of vision. Lift your voice and pray. Careless living comes to an end. Superstitious living comes to an end. Living without a sense of purpose, living without a sense of discipline and focus in the name of Jesus, it comes to an end. I obtain grace to set goals. I obtain grace to set kingdom goals for my life, for my church, for my ministry, for my destiny, for my family. I refuse to just come into the day, come into the morning, end in the night, come into another morning, end in the night without goals, without plans for my life. I I decree and declare in the name of Jesus based on the word of God and based on my expectation I set goals I write the vision I make it plain so that I can run I write the vision I write the vision and I make it plain Habakkuk said I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower and I will see what you will say to me I like you to decree and declare father vision vision i'm tired of visionless living i'm tired of living without constraints i'm tired of having anything just going for it like that lord i make up my mind i decree and declare that vision gives me discipline it will guide me it will help me to know who to talk to where to go to and where not to go to the discipline that comes with visionary living i obtain grace for it vision for my finances vision 
for my spiritual growth, vision for my health, vision for my family, vision for ministry, vision for career, vision for business. And then let's pray concerning faith. Oh, how we need it, how we need it. An understanding of faith. Lift your voice and pray. Father, I believe that you are a God of integrity. I believe you are a God of ability. I believe you are a God of integrity. I believe you are a God of ability. Thank you for your integrity. You do not lie. You are God all by yourself. Thank you for your ability. You are not limited. Therefore, I trust you. Lift your voice. Pray. I trust you. I trust you over my finances. I trust you over my ministry, over my spiritual life. I may not see how things will change, but I know they will change at the instance of faith. Now, I'd like you to lift your voice and pray. Lord, reveal to me the principles that connect to my desires. The principles that connect to the possibilities I desire produced in my life, in my family, even in this season. I pray for the spirit of revelation. Connect me to the truths, O oh God. Connect me to the truths that are responsible for the possibilities I desire. That I will not shadow box and just be hoping for nothing. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ that I will find these truths and then obtain grace from God to walk in keeping with those truths. Lord, I obtain grace to walk in keeping with the truths that lead to wealth and abundance. I obtain grace to walk in keeping with the truths that lead to high-level spirituality. I obtain grace to walk in keeping with the truths that are responsible for influence. I obtain grace to walk in keeping with the truths that are responsible for spiritual power and authority. I obtain grace to walk in truth with the uh, in keeping with the truths that are responsible for favor for access for influence for lifting for longevity for peace in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ now I'd like you to release your faith with me you can stretch your hands to the screen as I pray for you father I pray for the liberty church I pray for Dr. Shola, his wife, the entire congregation. Thank you for this honor you have given to bring your word, the word that will shift us to the next dimension. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that these truths you have heard will not stand against you. In the name of Jesus, I release grace, grace upon you, grace upon grace, grace to live visionary lives, grace to walk by faith, grace to understand the dynamics of Bible faith. In the name of Jesus, I come against every orchestration of darkness. I decree and declare that every manipulation from hell and every onslaught of darkness channeled towards your peace and your liberty. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. My Bible declares blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. The Bible says he nailed it to his cross. Therefore, I declare liberty for you. Even as the name of your church is, I speak liberty. Liberty in finances, liberty in your spiritual life, liberty in your family, liberty in career. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I bless you by the power of the Holy Ghost and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus there is no going down. I prophesy to you you are moving to higher dimensions, higher levels of grace. In the name of Jesus, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, experience supernatural grace, supernatural grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Now very quickly before I go off air, please listen carefully. Invite everyone you can find to connect on Monday. All of the platforms that we're going to be hearing from will be made available. Please, it's going to be a miracle service. I'm going to be praying for you. And then let me give you an instruction if your pastor will allow. Please write a request of things you are trusting God for. The things that you're trusting God for that must be out of your life. And the things that you're trusting God to bring into your destiny. I'm going to be praying for you and prophetically declaring over those requests. And shifting you by prophecy 
to a new dimension. I still have other principles I'm going to be sharing with you. So make sure you connect early. I believe that the details will be uh, on your screen to just know what and what to do and how to connect. Please be sure that you connect. Invite as many. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you, Dr. Shola. Thank you one more time. I love you with all my heart. Liberty Church, thank you so much for this honor. The Lord bless you in the name Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and let a The face of development Lord grant me the discipline